Alyssa, I'm so happy to meet you and so excited to talk to you. Thank you so much for giving me some of your time today. Absolutely. Thank you for facilitating this. First off, I'm going to ask you, why entrepreneurship? Why and how did you become your own boss? That is a great question. I think like many entrepreneurs, my journey had a mind of its own. Um, I started out the very traditional route of working for a corporation. Um, I was in environmental engineering, uh, doing marketing uh, at a national level, which was a really exciting and different um opportunity. It wasn't something that I ever saw myself getting into. And then from there, I actually transitioned to a tech company. And I realized that I had a unique skill set that wasn't being utilized in my community. Um, we have a lot of great rural businesses, a lot of great small businesses, um, and even you know, a lot of international investors um, within our community in those businesses. So, you know, while they're doing a lot of really great and exciting things, they maybe don't have the time or aren't the most tech savvy themselves. And so I saw that as an opportunity to take that unique skill set and apply it locally within our community. Um, in 2019, after the third acquisition my then tech company had gone through, uh, my entire team was let go. And so at that point, I realized I had to either find another nine to five or try this entrepreneurship thing full time and see where it would take me. And that was three years ago. And we've been going strong ever since. Entrepreneurship comes with some uncertainty for most entrepreneurs. So how did you manage that? How did you manage that uncertainty? You know, I think a lot of the uncertainty around entrepreneurship comes from that level of not knowing, not knowing, you know, if you're going to have the support. Um, I think a lot of it is imposter syndrome, our own um, fears and thoughts around our inadequacies that probably aren't even there. Um, you know, I took my business full time in fall of 2019, right before a global pandemic. Um, and <laughs> it was something that also threw a wrench into things um, and added to those uncertainties. So I think surrounding yourself with people who are there to ground you and remind you just how talented and skilled you are when you can't see it for yourself is really, really important. And building up that network around you, I think is what every entrepreneurship or every entrepreneur needs. I think there are some unique challenges and, and you've touched on a few of them. One being a rural entrepreneur, another being a female entrepreneur, and then an extra layer for you being in, an indigenous entrepreneur. So there are challenges interweaved in, in those, I guess, kind of identities. What have you found to be your experience? I've been extremely fortunate in my experience. I have always been a woman working in a male dominated industry. Um, first and foremost, um, with the environmental engineering firm that I was working at, it was predominantly male. Um, with the tech company that I was working at, there were eight out of 35 um, employees in the office who identified as women. And that was when I had started initially. By the time I left five years later, it thankfully had increased um, pretty exponentially. But again, it was, you know, a, a man's world and as a woman 
there were definitely challenges, I think, around the traditional idea of, you know, men are more logical and we're a tech company and, you know, there's a lot of developmental based um, projects going on and women tend to be a bit more creative and maybe not as aggressive or authoritative. And I think, you know, having the opportunity to take my business full time allowed for me to kind of squash any of those stereotypes and do things the way that I wanted to do them and kind of forge my own path. Um, I think it's something that I am really proud of in terms of, you know, identifying as Indigenous, identifying as a woman in tech um, and working in STEM, I think is something that I personally am really passionate about. It's something that I want to see more of. Um, I do a lot of work with Laurier's Women Entrepreneurship Center, and they are very much focused on empowering women in those different categories as well. And so I really kind of saw this as an opportunity to take the fact that I've been really fortunate in having support and trying to be that support for others. It's very inspiring. Um, What have you found to be the pros and cons of entrepreneurship. Obviously there's some good stuff and some bad stuff. So what what are the challenges and what are the good things? Yeah, um, well, I can definitely start off with a couple of challenges that have, I think, become more apparent as I entered motherhood of fall of last year. Um, Of course, entrepreneurs don't have a standard um, maternity leave. We don't have access to the standard maternity leave benefits that um, a typical traditional nine to five employee would have. You can, of course, pay into special benefits, um, but you have to actually do that for the remainder of your career as an entrepreneur if you want to take advantage of them. So financially, it doesn't actually make sense for a lot of women. Um, So that's something that I personally feel really passionately about, um, having just had my daughter. She just had her first birthday. (laughs) So um, that has been a challenge. Um, Juggling motherhood with um, entrepreneurship, wanting to be able to show up for my daughter, but also show up for my clients. I'm a client-faced business. Um, You know, my clients rely on me. However, it's been really important for me to also have the opportunity to set boundaries. Um, And I think that Creating boundaries as an entrepreneur is so incredibly important. I think, you know, setting your own business hours or committing to times that you'll reply to emails or answer the phone is really important. No one expects for Walmart to open outside of their business hours for them. And I think it's okay um, to set those boundaries for yourself. I think maybe as women, we have a harder time in setting boundaries, um, but I'm here to say it's happening. I'm, I'm setting the boundaries. So if you, you like it, great. If you don't, maybe I'm not the perfect fit for you. Um, in terms of positives, there are so many positives. <laughs> I love having the flexibility. Um, early on in my uh, motherhood experience, we had some health concerns with my daughter, and I really loved to the fact that I had the flexibility to be with her, to go to all of her appointments, to implement, you know, the different exercises that we had to do with her and really have that flexibility. Um, In addition, I love being able to make my own schedule. I love being able to pick the projects that I want to take on. Um, So not every person who approaches you is always going to be a perfect fit. And I think that it's really powerful to know what projects you're excited about and what projects maybe are better off for somebody else within your industry. Um, I don't think that there's ever any harm in saying no. And I think if anything, it gives you a really great opportunity to make connections within your industry and refer people. Um, You know, another thing that I really love about entrepreneurship is the community aspect. We, especially in Oxford County, have an incredibly strong community of small business owners. 
everyone knows everyone, everyone works to support everyone. And I think that that's so special. Yeah, you do have a great community. I've spoken to a few of the entrepreneurs in your county and you you all support one another. And that's amazing to have. Mm -hmm. Switching gears a little bit, what brings you the most joy with entrepreneurship, maybe with your clients, maybe, you know, anything? What, what brings you the most joy about it? Absolutely. So pertaining to the things that bring me the most joy in being an entrepreneur, I really love helping my clients turn their vision into reality. So a big part of my business is branding and website design. A lot of the times my clients are kind of at the, you know, the grassroots level, just getting started and are unsure of the direction to go. Um, and it's really neat to kind of join them on that journey from something that is just beginning and then seeing it through to the launch of a storefront or the launch of a new subscription or a new website and having the message me that they got their first order or they had a client on their website that was really talking highly of it. Um, all of that just brings me such joy and kind of really reaffirms why I do what I do. You get automatic feedback with what you do, like in analytics and things like that. So that must be really gratifying. I can see that. On, on the is. other it's hand awesome. of that, <laughs> on the other hand of that, what keeps you up at night? What keeps you, you know, lying awake in bed at night? Um, you know, you always want to show up for your customer. Um, you always want to be the best version of yourself. Um, but at the end of the day, we are human. Um, we are business owners, but we are human. And it's, I think, really easy to overlook that when we're so used to faceless corporations being at the forefront of our daily interactions, whether that's on social media or walking into a big box store. Um, you know, we are human. A lot of us are sole proprietors, um, which means that we don't actually have employees. If we do have employees, that's just an added level of complexity because yeah. we have to show up for them as well. Um, so I think, you know, really applying pressure on yourself and being self-critical is a natural thing for people. Um, but I think we also have to give ourselves the grace to be human at the end of the day and realize that, yes, um, you know, I am a small business owner. I am an entrepreneur, but I'm also a mother. I'm also a wife. I'm also a daughter, a friend, and I have those duties to fulfill as well. So I think that, you know, taking the time to acknowledge that and give yourself a little bit of slack is really important for your mental health. With that in mind, how do you ground yourself? How do you get grounded when, you know, things are out of balance? We, we you know, we talk about work-life balance. Well, it's really difficult to do that when you're an entrepreneur. So how do you personally ground yourself so that you can get back to setting those boundaries and all of the things that are good for you? For me, I really need to kind of set um, a home workspace and then a home, you know, leisure space. So maybe, you know, I'm doing work today from the couch. I'm not going to do my resting on the couch later this evening. If I'm doing my work in my office, that's perfect. I close the door at the end of the day and I can go and relax elsewhere and not feel like I'm on the clock. Um, I think having those designated workspaces is really important if you work from home. Um, but in addition, I try to get out at least once a day on a walk. Uh, I take my daughter, we do, you know, this trails around our neighborhood. And that's a good, you know, 45 minutes where I'm disconnected. And being disconnected, I think for me is incredibly important because my entire 
job is online. Um, so, you know, leaving the phone behind so I'm not aimlessly scrolling on our walk um, or posting on social media, that kind of thing. Um, I think that that is something that really helps to ground me personally. What's something you wish somebody would have told you about entrepreneurship that you didn't know? I think I, I personally think that having heard from somebody else who has been through the process, maybe um, about some of the expectations that are put on entrepreneurs that aren't necessarily put on those who have a traditional nine to five, um, again, kind of going back to the idea of, you know, being accessible outside of certain hours or, you know, having the opportunity to, you know, kind of revel in this, this title of entrepreneurship, which is really exciting, but at the same time, um, isn't your only identity. I think that is something that is really important to acknowledge um, as an entrepreneur. Piggybacking that on that a little bit, what is the best advice anyone has ever given you? I've received a lot of really great advice over the years. Um, so trying to narrow it down, I think is a little bit tricky, but I think one of the things that has really stuck with me is the idea that no is a full sentence. Um, you know, Again, when choosing the projects that you're looking to take on or the clients that you're looking to work with or, you know, even spreading yourself thin unnecessarily, I think all of that comes back to understanding what you're passionate about and excited about and the projects that you want to take on and work with and recognizing that it's okay to turn things down. Um, it doesn't make you a failure. It is okay to refer a client to a quote unquote competitor. There is enough pie to go around. Um, you know, if anything, I think that it's a really great opportunity to make those additional connections within your industry. You know, occasionally I work with people within my industry because I don't have the capacity and it's a really great feeling to know that I've sent a client to somebody else that does amazing work. Um, you know, that community and collaboration over competition, I think is a really, really unique thing to entrepreneurship and small business owners. And so taking no at face value and accepting that, you know, it's, it's okay. It's okay to, just say no, do the things that you want to do. You know what? It gave me pause. When you said that, I was like, wow, that is so, that is so impactful. I, I, I honestly, ha I feel silly because I have not heard that before, but what, like it just, I was, I took a breath in and I was like, oh my God, that's so good. I think especially again, as women, we are so you know, we're so used to no because, or, you know, here's a slew of excuses as to why I can't or don't want to do something. And we don't need to have that slew of excuses or reasons for why we don't want to do something. Like if it, if it were, you know, do you want sugar in your coffee? No. You don't have to go, I don't like sweetener. Oh, I'm on a, I'm on a diet or what, whatever the case is, you know, no, you just, you don't want the, the sweetener in your coffee. That's fine. No, I don't want to take on this project. That is also fine. And um, I think that it's just okay to make that acknowledgement and to stand true in that. It's such great advice. I like, I, I'm going to, I'm going to quote that to people now. I, it's so good. Um, I want to ask you, um, kind of along the same lines as a woman and as a woman business owner, 
What are you tired of hearing? Mm. Um, I'm tired of hearing that the pay gap doesn't exist. Um, mm. That's something that drives me bonkers <laughs> in social media. Um, you know, I'm I'm tired of hearing that um, there are no inequalities between men and women, that men and women are completely equal, um, and that there, because of that, is maybe no need for feminism or, you know, equal rights because they, quote unquote, already exist. Um, I think those are probably the two that really irk me. And I think that in today's digital landscape, people don't have the same excuses to be ignorant. It is okay to not know and to say that you don't know or to make a statement or have an opinion on something. But as soon as you know better, you have to do better. And if you personally are choosing to not learn or use the resources at your literal fingertips, if you're holding a smartphone, then you're choosing to remain ignorant. And I think that that is really sad and disappointing um, because, you know, they're just, you don't have the excuse anymore. I love that. I, and, and, you know, you can see me nodding. Like it makes complete sense to me too. I, I, yeah, there's no excuse. You have a daughter and, um, you know, we hope that the world is better for her as she grows up. Um, what are your hopes? Like where, where do you hope the world is at? Uh, you know, if she wants to become an entrepreneur, and follow that path, what do you hope changes or happens? I hope that women are taken as seriously as men when they go in for a business loan, um, that they are not automatically asked for a co-signer. Um, I hope that funding in general is more often granted to women entrepreneurs as opposed to men. Um, I believe it's only 10% of funding that actually gets allocated to women-owned businesses, which is a really devastating statistic. Um, And I hope that when the time comes that if she wants to be an entrepreneur in a male-dominated industry, or if she wants to seek an apprenticeship in a trade, that she's not automatically disregarded as an option um, or a candidate for an interview just because of the fact that she's a woman um, and looks a certain way. So I think that those are some of my hopes for the future pertaining to that. Alyssa, thank you so much. That is so inspiring. (laughs) And, And the no is a full sentence. I honestly will never forget that. Thank you so much for your time today. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me and for conducting this interview. It was a lot of fun.